Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a late night insight video. It is uh, 10 degrees here in Texas tonight, so I've got my warm sweater on. You know, the faucets are dripping so the lines don't clog up, uh, so I still have running water, and uh, it's a perfect night to do a review of a fragrance like this. This is from the house of Prin, who, if you've been following my channel, you know that Prin is very, very hit or miss for me. And so this is actually called Varuk. Varuk, Varuk is on fire, but um, Varuk in Sanskrit basically means wolf, from my understanding, or some call this fragrance the big bad wolf. Actually, I did a spray about three or four hours ago. I'm going to do another one because this is actually one of the print fragrances that I really like. Um, and like I said, very hit or miss house for me. Um, and uh, it's it's funny because... If you've been following my channel, and I've reviewed a handful of prints, you know, not just one or two, but there's maybe five or six print reviews. There's a whole playlist of prints reviews on my on my playlist you can check out. Um, I've reviewed things like The Chilla, uh, Anthamara, Haxon. I've reviewed uh, Mora. I've reviewed Mogao. I've reviewed a bunch of these different fragrances. Um, and if you're not familiar with Prin's work, um, sometimes I felt like he is... A bit of a mad scientist, to me, just in my personal opinion. It's funny because I read some of these reviews and they're like, oh, absolute masterpiece. And then if you've heard some of the uh, explanations of some of the fragrances from Prin, for me anyways, his animalic fragrances that he put out were constantly misses, in my opinion. Um, and, and the reason is, is I just felt like, uh, if you go watch, you can go watch some of those reviews if you want comic relief. Excuse me, I think those reviews are actually pretty funny because one of them, I said it felt like, you know, a, a toddler picked up a cat turd out of the litter box and put it in the stew he was making the perfume with. Another one, I said it felt like, you know, a dog ate another dog's turd and then threw it all up. You know, the animalics in some of his fragrances were absolutely disgusting and off-putting to me personally. And if you know me, I have a huge tolerance for animalics compared to the average bear. Uh, the ram has a huge tolerance for animalics. So there were a lot of people that kept telling me, stick with it. You'll find fragrances from him that you like. And the thing about Prin is he is a little bit of a, I think he puts out a lot of stuff, right? He does like this scattershot approach, right? In my opinion. And he releases stuff very quickly. And um, that doesn't mean it's not quality, but I don't feel like he spends as much time on each release as he could. I feel like he releases a lot of stuff. Uh, and... His animalic fragrances I have not liked, but if you go watch the channel, you'll find, especially Mora, Mora for me was a huge hit. It was almost like a Sheepra style construction uh, with coffee. It reminded me a little bit of Diaghilev meets Civet by a Zoologist. Just a beautiful blend. I really, really liked Mora. But Mora wasn't animalic. It wasn't, it, it had a slight touch of animalics, but it wasn't one of his big hardcore animalics. And the thing about Prin that I sort of learned is in his animalic fragrances, they always open up with this big, brutal blast, okay? Just absolutely brutal. And it almost felt like he was going for, you know, like unwearable brutal is really the way that I mean. There's no way I could wear some of these big, hard animalic fragrances that Prin puts out um, anywhere out in public. And I wear anything anywhere, but though some of his releases are just way too much. And it's funny because if you go look at some of the comments on some of those releases... It's like, oh, it, absolute masterpiece, you know, anyone who doesn't understand this just doesn't understand what a genius Prin is, and, um, you know, it, um, I felt like Prin was going for shock factor. Like, if I could just put the most animalic thing in there, people will think it's so challenging and amazing that it's just a masterpiece, but they just don't understand it because they're not smart enough. You know, that's kind of what it felt like to me. And so his big animalic fragrances constantly put me off, and what's crazy is Varuk um, is a fragrance that I've tested now three times. This is the third time. You can see I've put a pretty good dent in this uh, little decant. By the way, I believe this was sent to me by Ajay, so thank you, Ajay. But, um, I can't exactly put my finger on it is what's crazy, but this is an animalic opening, and it's an animalic opening that sort of has a Prin-like smell. Um, if you're familiar with his Accord, he loves using Thai Oud. He is a Thai perfumer, right? So this animalic blend is Thai Oud. He has an animal fur accord. 
uh, he has beeswax, which actually on his website says it's an from an animal product. So I don't know if he's using like natural beeswax or what. But um, the synthetic uh, materials in here are um, the fur accord and the castorium. There's a big castorium note. This is actually, uh, I think the majority of the animalic note in here comes from the castorium. And, you know, castorium in and of itself, I think, can give off this um, animalic leathery uh, type vibe, sometimes very metallic. And, you know, but when you blend it with that fur accord, it really does give off this big bad wolf like accord. And especially in the opening, the opening of this is um, probably extremely challenging to somebody who doesn't have experience with these type of um, artisanal fragrance houses, right? That's what I've come to call Prin Lamros and Russian Adam, and they're different from niche. They're different from indie. You know, yesterday I reviewed a fragrance from the House of Olympic Orchids. I would consider that indie, right? One lady uh, on the west coast of the United States, you know, she created an orchid, and then three or four years later she released a perfume house. That's more indie. Prin, I think, falls more into the artisanal houses because of the materials he works with. He loves working with natural ouds and stuff like that. And his fragrances aren't cheap. I think 30 mils of this goes for $210, if I'm not mistaken. Some, somewhere around there, 210 to 215 or something. Um, and so, um, you know, what, what, um, what is interesting about Varouk, though, what really catches my attention is from the very first time I've sprayed it, I loved it, okay? And I was trying to figure out why, like, what is the difference between this and Anthamara or this and one of the other prints that are animalic that I just despise, you know, like those fragrances, I instantly hated. This one, I instantly loved. And it was the same thing with Mora, actually, whenever I, um, whenever I got to know Mora, thanks to the generosity of Nick, who sent me a very um, generous decant, you can go check out my review, go watch my print reviews or what, put it on the playlist if you're interested in watching them all. Um, but it was like, Prin, it's either an instant love or an instant hate. There's very little in between. Um, and so this one, I think what I've come to the conclusion on, and I can't exactly put my finger on why I like the animalics in this, and I don't like the animalics in the other ones, but what I've come down to, my, my, um, you know, very minimal experience with this fragrance. I only have a sample. I don't have a bottle. I haven't been wearing this for years or anything like that. But what I think is going on is it feels like this is a better blended fragrance to me. It feels like um, some of those other fragrances, if you go watch some of my other reviews, there were a couple times where I said the spices on this just feel like you went to go put a little bit of cumin in here and you know how you have like a jar of cumin or something and they have the top with the holes in it and let's say went to go dump some cumin in and it wasn't sealed properly and the whole thing just fell out right that's what a lot of his spicy fragrances feel like they felt very unbalanced and it felt like maybe when one of those ingredients got overdosed he meant to put in a pinch but he put in like the whole jar he just went eh whatever I'll run with it and everyone's like masterpiece and um so I struggled with that. I thought his fragrances were very unbalanced. This one, for whatever reason, um, maybe he spent more time on it. Um, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit of a similarity to Mora later on, but um, I feel like the shock value isn't here. It's, it's, it's animalic, yes, but it feels like it's blended as part of the story, right? There's a symbolic feeling to this fragrance. It feels more mature. It feels like Prin has grown up a little bit to me. And um, I'm nobody to judge him. He's the perfumer. It's his brand. This is just my personal opinion, okay? Uh, the, that whole Prin mad scientist bit that I felt like he was playing with earlier, you know, sitting over the cauldron, just dumping stuff in, creating a fragrance in 15 minutes, stamping it out, putting it out, and everyone being like, masterpiece. I don't feel like that's happening here. I feel like he spent time on this one, that he... Um, sort of honed his craft a little bit, if that makes sense. That's really the, the feeling that I get. And um, definitely by far, hands down, this is my favorite animalic Prin fragrance that I've smelled so far. Hands down, 100%. Um, you know, some of these fragrances that have the, excuse me, animalic touch to them. I think I recently rev reviewed a fragrance called Homa as well. And that's another one that was just way too much for me. Um, but, you know, it... Um, it feels like he has sort of honed his 
his craft with the spices especially. And I think the spices, when Pren used his spice combination previously, it really put me off. And here, this is a blend of a couple spices in the top. So you get cinnamon and you get black pepper, okay? The pepper is uh, less dosed than the cinnamon. The cinnamon feels a little bit more forward uh, and you can smell it. It smells warming. It smells sort of like cinnamon, like you would expect a high quality cinnamon note to do. And um, what's interesting about this fragrance to me is the idea behind it. So I'll read you a little bit of the blurb, but um, what he's done is he's taken Thai Oud, which again, I, I said he's a Thai perfumer, and he's mixed it with these animalic ingredients I mentioned earlier, the castorium, that animal fur bit, the Thai Oud, and um, there's a couple other things in here. There's what's called a jat, jatamansi note, which is basically another word for spike nard, I believe, and that's supposed to give like this musky, woody, aromatic, earthy, warm, sensual type of scent. And that is also probably a, a good way to describe cinnamon, that warm, sensual bit. And so it blends very well with everything. Um, and the idea of the scent, according to the blurb, is that it's supposed to be inspired. Varuk is not just inspired by a wolf, right? It's not just like a photograph of a wolf, right? This is supposed to be inspired by the nomadic culture of Mongolia, right? And, and so uh, it's supposed to be symbolic. The symbolic significance of the wolf is that the wolf is important to the Mongolian culture. And there's a photograph done by, I think, a very popular um, artist called Hamid Sardar Afkami. Apparently, he's not so popular. I've never heard of him. But um, there's a, a popular po photograph called Dark Heavens. And if you look up Dark Heavens on Google, if, you, if you're interested, uh, I would have made it as the thumbnail of this video, but I didn't want a copyright strike, so um, I don't really know how to do that without not getting one, so I'm just not going to do it. But, um, you know, if you go look up Dark Heavens, Hamid, Sardar, Afkami, you'll find a bunch of Mongolian photographs, okay? One is um, sort of a traditional Mongolian warrior looking guy on a horse, and on his arm is like a falcon, right? So he's on the horse, the mountains, there's like desert in the foreground, mountains in the background, typical Mongolian landscape, right? Um, another is a Mongolian woman standing in water holding a deer. Another is um, uh, a Mongolian uh, baby kind of laying against these uh, what look like reindeers. Another is, and here's where the wolf comes in, there's... Um, uh, sort of like a hiker. He looks like he's hiking through the mountains and flanked by each side of him are, are wolves. Um, or what look like wolves. Maybe they're sort of captive wolves or whatever they are. Friendly. I don't know. Maybe they've been around humans. But um, they look like they're flanked by wolves. There's caribou around some of them. But you get the idea of um, sort of this vast mountainous region with eagles and falcons and horses and wolves and all this stuff. And um, I don't know exactly which one is Dark Heavens because uh, I think Dark Heavens may have been like a book he put out or maybe it's all of kind of this collection of Mongolian photography. But it's actually really something if you go check it out. And, you know, what's interesting, and uh, maybe it's pure happenstance, but there is actually a coffee note inside of Varuk. So Varuk, the, pure, the, the in, entire note listing, according to the print website, is black pepper, labdanum, Thai oud, myrrh, and there's definitely that sort of warming, you know, myrrh adds that sort of, um, that warmth, right? That that resinous warmth, very licorice warmth, and um, um, earthy as well. And so there's that earthy warmth, there's the animalic fur to give it that animal bit, which wolf is obviously the name of it, but you could take a look at the caribou, you could take a look at the horses. You, I mean, there's a lot of animals living around these nomadic people in the photographs. Um, and then the leather, which I really like the way it dries down because even now, you know, I just sprayed it when we started the video 15 minutes ago. And even now, that harsh, harsher animalic opening to some, which I actually really loved it from the get-go. But um, if you find the opening challenging, give this one time because there are other print fragrances where I've said... That animalic opening is just like a sledgehammer. It does not stop. No matter uh, how long you wait, you can wait three, four, five hours, it's still there, just pounding away. This one is not like that. 
That's why I say I think this is a little bit more refined because this really does dry down to this. I mean, the leather that's coming through now three hours later is absolutely brilliant. Three or four hours later. Um, that leathery dry down in this is amazing. And, and that has to do with the castorium, I'm sure. But it's also that ambery. There's this amber mixed with the myrrh. Um, I mentioned that spikenard note, which gives it sort of that woody, slightly musky, aromatic feel. And it all blends together with this note of um, moss and, and teak wood, which I mentioned, again, if you go watch my Mora review, I mentioned teak wood specifically because I said in that Mora review, I said teak wood is a note that's in Inside Man by Trusardi, which is one of my favorite Nathalie Lorson creations. I'll review that one of these days. That's a discontinued Trusardi, which I absolutely love. Um, and I specifically mentioned teak wood, and I also specifically mentioned coffee in um, Mora. Now, the coffee in Mora was the civet coffee, uh, Kopi Luwak, or whatever they call it, the very expensive coffee. This is just coffee absolute, but it's still, there are many accords that sort of line up with Mora. And so what it feels like to me, and maybe that's the reason I love this so much, is it feels like there is this Grand Shipra, right? This this very natural smelling, well thought out Shipra that has a lot of transitions. Shipras are my favorite category of fragrance. And he sort of stuck this animalic accord on top, but not just a, you know, rough and tumble shock value animalic accord, not just something that's there to put you off if for, you know, the people who smell it. And the first thing they're like, oh, disgusting. That's the most amazing masterpiece. Not for those people. This animalic note actually feels like it blends with it. It really feels like it's part of the composition. Um, and I really feel like this shares something with Mora. And those two, definitely Mora and this one, I think are two of my favorite prints. Some of the other ones, uh, like I really like the Oud and T'Challa from memory. The Oud there had this weird balloon, like plastic bag feeling to it. Um, but I but I love Oud fragrances and, and I really liked his take. I think that was a very rare and hard to find Thai Oud. So... You know, it's interesting because when I think about this scent in relation to his work, this scent in particular, um, Varouk, is maybe one of the most transportative scents because of the imagery that I just discussed. But, you know, if you think about um, sort of this captivating vastness of Mongolia, right? There is a fragrance that I plan on reviewing very soon. If you watched my uh, family portrait from Andy Tower where, where we talked about the fragrances in my collection and I ranked them from the house of Andy Tower. This ended up being very close to the top. Uh, and this is called Lone Star Memories. One of my all time favorite tower fragrances. And this is a fragrance that just kind of takes you on a journey. It takes you on a tail. Now, Baruch and this smell nothing alike, but this really sets the scene of Texas. You know, it gives this cowboy rustic landscape. You're, it's like, you know, it's this, um, it's this grand fragrance, right? It takes you somewhere. It takes you on a journey. Even if you're not in Texas like me, sp spray this and it'll be like you're in Texas uh, with a cowboy from the good old days, wearing a holster um, and riding a horse, wearing the big cowboy boots. You know, there's something camped out by the fire. There's something to that. Varuk takes, takes me on a very similar journey. Imagine like a Mongolian version of Lone Star Memories. Not in smell, but in journey, how it takes you to that place. You know, it really feels like you're amongst these nomadic people. And, but along with that, the other side of it is that it dries down to something quite tame for something so animalic and challenging in the opening. And there's definitely some harsh bits in the opening. It feels like Prin's opening. I think if you put this under my nose and I didn't know who it was, I could probably guess it was Prin. Uh that opening has his DNA, and yet, that those bits that put me off so much, right? Cat turd out of the litter box. None of that is here for me. I instantly love this scent. Um, maybe that was the undertone of Mora speaking? I don't know, but um, I, I think that this is one of his better works that I've tested. Now, I'm not a Prin expert. There are some people who love Prin. They say he's their favorite perfumer. I am not that person at all. In fact, uh, I'm very uh, leery of people who put print up there with some of the best artisanal houses. Like I said, this is the best way I can describe his house as an artisanal house. Uh, I don't think he really falls into the classic niche houses like 
Roja, Parfum de Marly, and I don't think he falls into Amouage, Initio, that kind of thing. He's a, in, in a different league. He's closer to the Russian Adams of the world and the Ensars of the world, but I always put him lower. You know, he's like a junior partner to me. I always thought the work of Russian Adam and Ensar and, you know, those type Bortnikov were higher up on the, on the totem pole for my taste. Um, but work like this and work like Mora makes me take, I think, the people who put Prin on that pedestal ser more seriously. You know, at first I would dismiss him outright. Especially when I when I reviewed Anthamara and Haxan as my first two, I was like, man, this house is just not for me. And people told me, stick with it. He is a very prolific perfumer. He releases a lot of stuff. And I feel like sometimes he releases a lot of stuff back to back to back to back to back. And his collection, his releases are huge. You know, sometimes he'll have like 10 new releases or something. Um, and, and so I think that's part of it. The other part is he has a lot of different houses. He has Prin, P-R-I-N, he has Prin, P-R-Y-N, he has Parfums Persana, he has Strangers Perfumery, so he has all these different houses and types and it's very hard to keep up with. And I think that's the other thing with him is, you know, sometimes a fragrance will leave one house and go to another and it'll be the same fragrance but different names and it's, it's very hard to keep up with everything. Um, but from the six or seven, I forgot how many now I've reviewed on the channel, Veruk is, is one of the winners and probably my favorite animalic fragrance from him uh, so far. So if you're a Castorium lover, I, I would urge you to check this one out. Um, or if you're a Sheepra lover, I think there's a little bit of that Mora in the background. Another one I think that you should probably check out. So yes, Veruk, I love the leathery dry down. See, like right now, three, four hours in, I would have no problem even wearing this to work. I mean, this is... Um, that, and that animalic opening that settles down so quickly, I mean, 15, 20, 30 minutes in, and it's already so tame, I think this is more wearable than the harsh big bad wolf name gives it, if that makes sense, but, uh, I'm a fan, I, I just, I'm a fan of Veruk, I have to say, so thank you, Ajay, for the, for the generous sample, letting me talk about something on the channel I, I never would have been able to, otherwise, if you all have experience with Veruk, uh, or Prin's work in general. Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks everyone for watching and commenting uh, and all the beautiful things you do for the channel. Thanks for being here. Cheers guys and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.